you know, black everybody. And here we go. As we're going to go ahead and see what's going on with the polar daily. Because I've already done, I will be able to, I think, show you that the idea that, well, we'll hit the daily because I've already found out the idea that it only goes to this. And it basically what it'll say is, plot is not available, follows the last available plot. So what I basically figure that I've got here is information that the idea, they don't want to let you know what's going on with the polar shift anymore. Now we know we can get it on solar. Okay. Now, uh, I think I could be able to get uh, orbit, all these things you should be able to pick from this site, at least you used to. Now, what makes me wonder is who's going to go investigating all these, but I'm getting mad about these NASA sites that are still up, if they're paying for web time and they're not actually giving us a product. Somebody's getting gypped. Okay. So, here we go with uh, polar orbit. Okay. I'll hit that instead of the deal, and I've got the date down there, correct, and everything like that. Hit the plot. And we get this nice information, which would be really nice to have right now, since we figured that we got. And now that makes me start thinking that when we get this warning, that that's the last data, then, and then also it's just basically a fact that when we go to solar, it shows us what shift we have, and we know we have shift. But we can't watch it daily, like IE, I just showed you, on the basically that you should normally be able to put in a daily survey for like that and all you get is that so more facts that we have got shift and so basically it'd be nice to get this if someone's got a new uh, updated site but basically this should be it and they're not giving us any information that's all they give us is 2008 so it's a good chance that we've been doing this shift and stuff since then so I'll refresh the paper in a little bit but the idea that we have uh, triangulation up there and yes we know that more than likely these are going to be messed up because basically it's not really showing us but we know that this object is there and this object is there and we also have uh, proof that they're not showing us the bottom of it from that solar and I'm going to refresh because I had this page earlier and then you have an object there and I slide across and this I've got it at 400% so you see all these are objects that's an object that's an object we have all these objects out in space okay uh, right up by the sun, and the sun's pretty much bumping into him, running into him, and that's where basically we're getting this dark area where the idea that it's been having stuff rolling into it, and it uh, could be because basically these small dots, basically that would be the idea of how big Earth is compared to the sun if we were up there. Okay, uh, basically anything you look at, even though I have it at 400%, anything like a dot like that, or even this, would be possibly close to the size, and actually that's probably way too large. We're probably just like I was saying. Any one of these dots here, these smaller dots, would be the size of Earth. So there's tons of stuff in the supergiants that are hitting the sun, i.e. the film that I showed you on the last uh, one of the movies. And I'll probably maybe get a shot to go into movies, get another one. Let's refresh solar here, because then we can see the shift of the axis again. And as you see, even refresh, that that's still showing like that right now. There's all your electrical plots. And as we see, we see a big signature of something rolling over the sun right there. Okay. There are objects in the supergiants, folks, and we are seeing that they're getting this trailing, and it's very interesting to get this blocked out. So we'll try to see if we can get it, hone it uh, on the live movie. We'll take a look at that possibly if we get time. But you can see that there are gigantic planets, belts in the supergiants rubbing up against the sun. As I.E., you've seen the material over there, so we're always checking solar out, and basically. We are seeing the remnants of a bigger moon today, as you see right there, and pop up to 400. It will pop down and give you the rotation. And there's where your weakness should be for the earthquakes tonight. Uh, sorry about the past. There you go. With CME, I had reports of people across the country today temporarily down power. Uh, we know we're here to get the moon real fast. There's what the moon looked like tonight, and we're going to go to Fireball real fast. And there's how much North Pole is off on the axis right now. So we're doing a twist that you've seen on that earlier map. If you go back to that earlier map, and you'll see some twists that it was going on in 2008. And it's basically, I think, somewhat of a our spiral twist is like that. It's like a figure eight. So right now, off that much on the South Pole, off that much on the North Pole. So going through space is more than 60, probably at least 66,000 miles an hour, or at least over 60,000 miles an hour. And we'll go down and see the uh, 
plot. Once again, we got weakness for uh, more than likely earthquake uh, north of Australia, around New Zealand, and so forth. Going to be more chance of earthquake, and how much the shift is off from January 1st to December 4th. Two squares between, pretty much. So we got a lot of polar shift going on. So basically, I made a mistake in my last one, correcting myself, because basically east is counterclockwise, okay? Or counterclockwise. So I guess I did correct myself correctly, okay? East is counterclockwise. Alright, so west was correct when I corrected myself in the last video. Like this. So this is what we got tonight with the moon that we've got getting brighter and the propagation that we're getting with planets that are close by it. So we'll go ahead and give you the map. Uh, and that's basically in, I believe this is in Mexico skies. And we'll get the constellation map, give you a really quick shot of that. And i.e., you look at the purple and you'll also see the way they were tilting towards or away from the sun because that's north or actually tilt toward the sun, I guess, because east will be here, okay? So the North Pole is, is like it's always saying, that basically the South Pole, which is our axis, is turning towards the east and towards the sun to the left. So, okay, we're in the fall solstice, and so the idea that we realize that we are following the sun very closely than we normally do, uh, nearest distance from orbit center ever recorded is that IU there. Okay, we are just one tick off of that. We are 9833. Three. Okay, watch. I've got up here 91.4 million miles. Current result for Earth distance from the sun is 983 AU. So that's why you don't see hardly any goddamn zone. We're in the fall solstice. Supposed to be as winter, a winter basically solstice, and we're supposed to be as far away from the sun as we normally can ever be. And we are at an almost just one tick off, which is probably. More than likely, let's see how the distance is of 9832 IU to that current result. And without even computing, we're pretty much at it or damn close to it because 91.4 is rounded. So, and that's what we've been before. So, pretty much, we are at the all time recorded closeness of the sun because we may have moved. So if anything, we're just a few thousand miles away from the closest distance of the sun, ladies and gentlemen, ever recorded by human man, ever. Here's our current North American sky chart also, but it'll put the planet on there. So basically, we have got Jupiter by the moon right now, okay? And this is all the constellations that you'll see just with the other map I showed you. And we'll go back and look at uh, the sky with the moon, because it's Jupiter's right there. To the, basically on this would be west, I believe. Yep. So Jupiter's west right now of the moon. So, i.e., on the east, since the west has got Jupiter, uh, Jupiter more than likely possibly could be that there, but then we don't know what it is for sure because that could be street lights. I'm not sure if that's the asteroid belt or not. But we know this is the moon for damn sure, and then we're getting a reflection of Jupiter right here, and we can also, I think, Jupiter might have rings. I can't remember if Jupiter's got rings or not. But no matter what, you're getting a triple 3D reflection of Jupiter, yeah, because they've got it at as being north to being that way at an angle. So, and we know this is east, so that's west, and that makes sense because the moon's going to the west. So basically, we're getting the reflection from Jupiter right here, there. Okay, so you get like a 3D reflection there, i.e., of what we've been getting of Michael Cantaris and Proximi Centauri down at uh, Nehemiah. Okay, now very interesting in this shot is. This here, what is this asteroid belt? What is this? There's some explanation to that. That might actually be maybe a stagnant piece that we've been seeing, that flat piece underneath the sun, no matter what stays in position, and even gets some glow off the moon to do that. And also we have a planet here. Is that just the reflection of Jupiter? And then what is this reflection of what planet is this? Because all we've seen when we go to the sky map is we just have Jupiter in the, currently in the sky right now. Okay? So, we have some interesting explaining to do on this here, and I would think this would be Jupiter, some kind of a 3D of it, and is this Jupiter here, which it shouldn't be, this should be Jupiter. So we have something else of one of the stars out in the, uh, basically the constellation map somewhere, 
is getting so Rigel or, or something in the Supergiants is getting reflected there. So there's another shot of tonight of the moon and basically we should be able to drag down and there's Telus. What's interesting until the home we get this and we see that later in other shots that later in the evening. So then we go up and we get drag down Chickamauga. Chickamauga. And I you get this action over here that we've been seeing from whatever they keep on seeing over in China or whatever the hell. So I know it doesn't make much sense, but the idea that it keeps rising during the day that you get that over there. So it's objects in the super giants that they're getting, it's not a damn UFO. And then we've got then we get Huntsville. So these are all night shine shots and just watch the arrow because some are a little bit trajectory different on the north. That's means the north. And this side is east always. So interesting. Constellation shot up in the middle of the night with the moon. No matter what we know that's Jupiter. I.e. that's Jupiter. So the most important thing to realize is that we are getting this action from the supergiants and the star belts out there reflecting and putting rays down to Earth like that volcano action because we know that we are getting this and we know that the only thing we should see is Jupiter. Now we'll see the constellations, but this is coming very, bleeding in very damn good and all these other objects also, folks. They bleed through, straight through, because the only thing 3D would be this, this, this if it was Jupiter. And it shouldn't be. It should be a constellation right there. And basically we can see that by grabbing it. That the idea that more than likely that's probably half or Elder Baron or Bella. Okay. So that's the constellation right now. So we have constellation stars bleeding through and doing that. I.e. right there. So and the other ones too. So you can match them up. So bringing up Venus's position on today's date when we have this shot here. We have this time. And uh, if we get the sky chart and we will end up seeing Venus here alone in this shot with the scene of shadows. The sun's over here and the supergiants are in this direction giving the dark side of Venus over there. So when we're looking at this and then we go back and look at the shots of more than likely the bright side of the supergiants into the sun of Venus it is putting a plasma or it's just what a lot of people end up saying with the idea that you know that the astronauts practice pressure suits. It's just like water. So there is a shield being hit out from CME action that's been hitting there or something's going on or it's the tail of Lovejoy. So anybody that's got H1 shots that day, that could be Lovejoy's tail. It's hard to tell because all we get that from H1 is that today and then we get this and then we know that that's Venus there. Okay, Or basically up here in this circle because this should be Earth up in this circle here. Okay, with the dark side to Earth there and the bright side over there towards the supergiants. So today that explains our but then we have that action. So it's a lot more than inner flare and I think that's why we're not getting H one shots. It's NASA's mad that we basically have destroyed this inner uh, camera flare crap that basically there's something to do with the planets of having some kind of energy field almost so we'll have to wait and see. I think their theory has been kind of half cut. I mean, it's been blown away. Okay, it's not camera flare because the camera's behind. So that's Lovejoy's tail, but also the other stuff's already proved it's pretty much correct. So I'm going to show you that interesting wishbone that we had up by the sun today. This is humongous, folks. We had a giant wishbone or V that we found, and there it is, blown up to a thousand percent. You'll see that object right there. There it is at a thousand. We'll see what else we got in here. Pictures real fast of the back of the sun. You can freeze these, and we'll take up the last bit of the tape on here. We got a few seconds left. So that was backside shots of the sun today. We found that cluster there, and you can always read this stuff in an interesting situation down there to the left. So 
More back soon.